<laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm Kristen Vangenhoven. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the producing artistic director of Wham Theater. And I uh, live in Lenox, Massachusetts, which is the ancestral homelands of the Mohican tribe. And today I am really excited to share with our Whamily a short behind the scenes interview with the actors who just finished their rehearsals for the Thanksgiving play by Larissa Fast Horse, which is going to be presented to our Whamily from Thursday, November 19th until Sunday, November 22nd. And you can buy tickets at our website. So I am thrilled to welcome Molly, Tom, Carissa, and Rylan. And thank you so much for giving your time after just spending two crazy, insane weeks rehearsing this play over Zoom. <laughs> I'd love to start with just introducing each of you to our audience. If you can share your name, uh, your pronoun, where you're Zooming in from, and what your role was in the Thanksgiving play. Maybe we'll start with Molly, we'll go to Tom, and then Carissa, and end with Rylan. I'm Molly Parker Myers. Um, I my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm I'm zooming from uh, my home in Stone Ridge, New York, which is the ancestral homeland of the Lenape people, and I played Logan in the Thanksgiving play. Yeah. I am Tom Truss, and I. I'm zooming in from Great Barrington, which is the home of the Mohicans. And I played um, Jackson Smithton, I think. I might be the only one who has, oh no, there are other people who have last names, but I think mine has a, my, she includes a last name with me. So I'm Jackson Smithton. Thank you, thank you. Carissa. I'm Carissa Dagenet. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm Zooming from Holyoke, Massachusetts, which is part of the ancestral homelands of the Nipmuc people. Um, and I played Alicia. And I am Rylan Morrisbach. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I am speaking to you from South Hadley, Massachusetts. Uh, the ancestral lands of the Pocomtuck, more specifically the Norwatuck people and I played Caden, the history teacher. <laughs> so, awesome, thank you. Well, I've been watching all of you in rehearsal, popping in and out, and it has been such a pleasure to watch all of you inhabit these characters and tell this hilarious and important story, um, especially right now. So I just had a few questions that I think our Whamily would love to hear from you, and, and I'd love to know um, what you all found different between performing in a sort of virtual digital play experience as opposed to what you're all used to of being in a live theater rehearsing with each other. What surprised you? What was different or the same? And uh, what really surprised you about that process? Um, you know, I think um, it was surprising in, in its... Um, and how similar it felt actually to, to, to doing a show in person. Um, to really, we really delved into it. We had a lot of rehearsal time, um, you know, more, we always wished for more, but <laughs> you know, and it was, it was really, it was really fun to, to, to explore. And we were able to really do that. We were really able to play and explore even in, um, in this format. I think the thing that, I missed a lot is to to really get to know everybody in in the cast and um, and crew um, all the people involved you know because we really didn't get a chance to to talk to to really um, delve into our our who we are as you know our our real people <laughs> so that was something that I missed a lot but um, but as our characters we were able to really you know dig in. I'll go. Um, I, I would definitely agree. Um, I, yeah, I think one of the things I missed was 
you know, in those moments when you're not on stage, you can be sitting next to the person or, or a fellow actor or going over lines or chatting about stuff or, or you know, checking in with the stage manager, or the, you know, the production crew, all of those little things. And, and that really, that didn't happen. Uh, so I missed, I missed that. It's, it's another layer of uh, becoming a family, I believe, that, um, that, that, I, that I missed. Um, I'm, seems like I'm going to talk about the things I missed. Let's see. I missed um, actually, you know, I'm, 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 my background is dance. And so literally having a body there and being able to touch somebody. And some of the, some of the bits in this would have been quite different had we been in the same room. Uh, so that was, that, that was a difference. I, I missed it, but I also enjoyed the challenge. Um, as an actor, I, I, I like having challenges. And so that was a definite challenge uh, for me to, um, I guess it's compensate for uh, not having a human being next to me to then how to, how to create that sense of connection through um, a little square that's maybe two by two. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Carissa or Rylan? Was there anything you found specific to this process, different than live theater? Uh, I found that the absence of going to a new space where I was then an actor and a character was really difficult. This is the space that I do uh, telehealth therapy from. So I was sitting at the same desk that I'd been at all day doing therapy, um, acting. And while well, I'm a drama therapist, so there's like some <laughs> acting it was also Alicia is very different from me and so there was really a harder push which I, I enjoyed because um it actually really made me relate to Alicia who was very much like acting as a job you show up and you do it and I felt a little bit of that like all right well now I have to show up and this is a job and like all of the fun things that Molly and Tom are talking about the connections and the sort of like hey how are you like there was none of that. Um, it was like, we're here to work and then we're done. Um, so I really missed that as well. And I also really had to turn the gears a little harder of like, I'm acting now and um, I'm wearing this like outfit that is like reserved for like, I barely wear this outfit, you know, <laughs> and like I'm putting all this makeup on and who's that person? Um, it, it's really, it was really like a mind feel, like a mind throw I'll say instead of swearing um for me <laughs> to do it uh the, I think one of the glimmers is that I've known Talia since I was 20 and Rylan and I went to high school so while it was really exciting to meet Molly and Tom and everybody else it was really grounding to be like okay but I know these people and like they know who I am and so there's this connection here that grounded me in being this whole new person on a tiny screen Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. Rylan, anything you want to add? Sure. Yeah. For me, I also missed the downtime in between scene opportunity to just connect and chat with fellow actors, stage managers, directors. I don't know. There's something that, that just subtly kind of occurs when everyone is, is physically in the same room. Um, I think we eventually managed to get there anyway, uh, in a weird way, maybe just the the adversity of having to push through and make it happen uh, had that ultimately that same effect of kind of drawing everyone together. Um, and we still laughed and had a good time uh, with all the technical problems and everything, uh, inevitable technical trouble. Yeah, for me, it was a challenge to, I think, it, it, originally, I may have been uh, sort of compensating a little bit too much in terms of reeling it in or feeling like I had to be very filmic and small. And I think maybe I fell into that trap a little bit early on in the process. Uh, of not energizing my performance enough because it is it's a play it was written for stage um it's not a screenplay so i think and i had just done an, an acting class um uh, through zoom so i think it took me a little while just to kind of get my energy up and also i don't know for me something about just this screen is a little like deadening i have to kind of overcome that and like kind of jazz myself up 
so so that was a little bit of a challenge um and the other thing is that in this class i took a little while ago all of the scene work we were doing was filmic in the sense that we established a convention where the camera doesn't exist so we were sort of doing it in this naturalistic way the decision made by talia and the rest of the production team to acknowledge that we were all on zoom as these characters in a weird way actually at first made it harder because <laughs> i kept thinking oh well i can't show that i'm using my mouse to click on things and then i realized oh wait yeah i can <laughs> so that was that was kind of a weird thing to wrap my head around well and i know that talia spoke with uh, larissa fast the playwright and you know, was talking about the as the conceit that she chose of putting these teachers on Zoom, like teachers are right now, trying to put this play on through Zoom. And Larissa just thought it was a really fun idea. Um, and from what I understand, she's going to actually watch it. And she's really excited about getting a chance to see it using this conceit. So, you know, from my perspective, watching it, you all definitely were jazzing it up. Uh, and you definitely were theatrical you know, in what you were doing. And you also were like creating this beautiful ensemble together. Like it was over Zoom, but you were, you felt like you had created this dynamic between the four of you. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, you all talked about not having the opportunity to really get to know each other or spend time uh, finding out about each other. So I wonder if this might be a nice chance to have a think about something you found really remarkable that you really appreciated about one of your fellow artists that you were working with or something you that sticks with you about like oh i'm so glad so and so you know brought this in or brought that in or had this energy or um that you felt really contributed to this process being uh fulfilling which hopefully it was even though it wasn't in person but that because the four of you were working together um you know you would look forward to coming to rehearsals i wonder if there's anything you want to share with one another since you don't didn't really get that chance in the room. Um, I'll say something <clears throat> which is not quite related, but it might, it's it's giving us a little moment to to figure out what we're going to say. Um, <laughs> I, I uh, you know, a, a plus for me in actually doing this via Zoom was um, well, one odd thing and one plus the odd thing was in acting, I don't normally get that immediate feedback of seeing myself. Um, you know, in the world of dance, I do, but in acting, I don't. And so, like doing a scene <laughs> with with Molly and like looking at Molly and then like going over, it's like, wait, that's me. Ah, looking over here and then it's like, what am I looking like? What am I doing? You know. So there's like like that idea of dailies. You know, where you go back and you see what you you know what was thrown in the can and etc. You know, what it looked like. It's instant. So that was very different, um, yeah. uh, very different. And, and, and I had to, that was a muscle that I had to build of like, right, focus in on your scene partner. It, it's like that, yeah, that mirror was strange. Um, the other thing that I actually really liked was being the set designer because all of this took place in our own homes. And so to um, have the opportunity to wear that hat was actually very fun. Um, very fun. Um, so now I will answer your quest question. Um, uh, I would say, um, I would say, uh, Carissa, it was so great because your camera work, I feel like, you know, you were like this the whole time. Like, rarely did I ever see you pull away uh, or like move away. And, and so it was so great to see you be so comfortable with being that close. You know, it's like your final, you know, <laughs> <She was acting. laughs> right, right, your close up. Um, and then all the little, you know, it's like your ease with putting on the makeup and doing all of that stuff while watching. Well, well, you know, being on Zoom, that was great. I, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed all that you brought there. Um, mm. yeah. Well, thank you acting um i do it's you know I, I try to when i'm doing therapy i tend to get close and the weird thing is when i'm doing therapy i look right at the camera right like i'm looking at the person and trying to see them in my peripheral while also looking at them so it was weird to because talia had to tell me to look at the person on the zoom instead of at my camera 
that was strange. But I'll, I'll mirror it back to you, Tom, and say that I felt that I was being very small and focused in the camera and I kept thinking like it's like doing film work like I have to remember I'm doing theater and I have to be bigger and I would use you as the inspiration for that because I was like Tom is like up Tom is like up and in his room like what is he doing and I I was like oh okay like because I usually am a very physical actor and I was saying at one point that not having my whole body to be this character that is so confident in her whole body was such a challenge like I didn't I had to be a super confident female f from sort of like the shoulders up and that was a weird way to try to figure that out um so thank you and also really Tom you brought every I mean you'll see in the the program all the thanks to Tom in the credits like I was, <laughs> really <laughs> thank you <laughs> Tom's set became his whole home. <laughs> yeah, and I'll also say, um, you know, for, to both other people, Rylan brought, I mean, and I, I don't mean to embarrass him, but like Rylan was an actor in high school that I looked up to. So it was really nice to be working with him. Um, I literally texted my high school best friend and was like, can you believe I'm going to play with Rylan? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was that's been wonderful um and molly i knew i liked you and knew we'd be friends and then friended you on facebook and was like oh yeah oh yeah this girl <laughs> like i just felt like we didn't have much interaction except as alicia and logan which is kind but fraught you know so i was like she doesn't know me <laughs> and then i was like oh this is gonna be great <laughs> like we're <Yeah>. friends <laughs> beginning of a beautiful relationship. Molly, oh, I love it. <laughs> want to offer anything? Me? <laughs> I didn't hear my name, but I, I will say that thanks, Carissa, for saying that. Um, and it was a pleasure working with you as well. Um, and I just was really inspired by and envious of everyone's physicality because that's something i think normally i tend to uh be a little from the neck up in my acting that's one of my challenges um but uh in this format that's really uh to me it seems a hurdle to overcome uh so i kept kind of looking for opportunities to sort of break out and and, and move around and everything I was perhaps at a little bit of a, a disadvantage, just uh, a good disadvantage, if that makes sense, uh, because that's sort of the way the character's written. He is kind of the, the you know, buttoned up one. Um, so it, it sort of worked. But, uh, you know, Tom was all over the place, you know, <laughs> and I just was was excited, I guess, to see that 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 is possible in this format. You can still give a physical performance. So um, if I ever get another opportunity to do a Zoom play, um, I don't know, I'll want to play like a trapeze artist or something, you know, something <laughs> Molly, you're somebody that I've known for a long time. We finally got the chance yeah. to like shine a light on you in a Wham show. So anything you want to add here? Um, I I don't know what anyone else was doing because I was just looking at myself in the little screen. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I do. That is that is a pro. Like I, I'm sure anyone who's ever been on a Zoom at a Zoom meeting, which is everyone now, um, will can commiserate with that. Um, no, I I really loved what everybody brought to to their roles and um and you know as the director of the piece in in the play um i really watched them all and um oh, right right because yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah, yeah cause they're viewing us from a whole other eye than the way we're viewing each other yeah. i love that i'd never thought of that yeah yeah and i really you know it was like you know you all have your your styles and um and that came across and i really want to direct something with all of you i'm not a director but um yeah, yeah i loved i loved working with everybody yeah I'm not a director but i play one on tv yeah exactly um, yeah I, I i thought it was so wonderful i have like these moments that when i think about each one of you and like tom doing the yoga and you know because you were also reading i mean we can't really tell to be honest with you that you were on book um because you were like 
had your scripts up on your screens or you have them in front of you and you know you became so familiar with like the beats of the scenes and stuff Talia was like oh they just missed this and that was like, we wouldn't know um but of course we wanted to say the words on the page because they're so brilliant and I was always amazed by how you could move around or you know Molly you were like watching everybody and then like going and writing things on the board and Chris is doing her makeup and Ryland's like turning around and pointing to the map and Tom's doing yoga and like getting something from another room and it really added a lot and I thought I remember saying to Talia like man these actors are juggling a lot <laughs> like this is a lot to ask so kudos to all of you because it really looks smooth from from our from the watching end you know um, I want to kind of just end, of course, WAM is an activist theater company. So, you know, we try to blend our arts and activism. And especially now, you know, we, uh, we knew for a long time kind of the state of our country and we're being reminded uh, right now of how much work there still is left to do towards a world of empathy, equity and belonging. And uh, Larissa Fasthorst writes this satire of four white teaching artists scrambling to devise this play as, as part of her activism. She sees playwriting as, as her activism. And so I'm wondering, I know each of you are, are on your own personal anti-racism journey, if participating in this play, working with Wham, if there's anything that you feel that you're taking with you that's new to you or that's deepened now, from being in this process that you take forward with you into the rest of your life. And I see Carissa nodding, so maybe I'll start with you. <laughs> um, I want to fully acknowledge that the, um, the jewelry that Alicia puts on to uh, appropriate Native American culture is jewelry that I own because I grew up in a family that has the very uh, American folklore of being Native American and not really any legs to stand on to prove it. Um, so I did a lot of work in my 20s and especially as I became a therapist and started with my cultural responsiveness abilities as a white woman um, to respond to that. And so it was hard for me to say, I have this. Um, you know, but I also feel like, especially as a therapist, um, a huge part of my anti-racism journey um, is to help other people make that journey as, and to say, like, we are raised. I have this big saying with kids. It's called Mama Says. Like, for a long time, you cannot convince kids of anything except for what their mom and dad say. You just can't. And then you wait until they're at this maturity where you say, gee, I wonder if that's maybe not how everything else works. Um, and so, you know, that jewelry is a, is sort of like a token of that for me of like, we used to go to powwows and, and we were told we were Native American. And so I bought and wore things, um, and bringing it to the play, which is satire of myself <laughs> was, was really eye opening. And I'm just so willing to be here in that vulnerability, um, because I think, I want to show other people that it's okay to be in that place and be uncomfortable in that place and that if I can tolerate it, you can tolerate it, I promise. Um, it's okay to say I made a mistake and it's okay to say that this was my family folklore and I'm not, listen, my great grandfather is still alive and like that's a tough conversation, you know, like a really tough one that every Christmas we slowly start to say like, you know, grandpa, like, mm, I don't know. But we have to, you know, we have to, some of us have to ease into it in certain places and other places we just come in swinging, you know, and we have to like really navigate that as, he, as people. Um, and I think that I want to really be here and sit here with the people who are uncomfortable and like, like you see my cheeks turning red, like it's a tough place to be. Um, and, I'm, and I'm just willing to be here. And this play was, you know, just there, a way to be there. Bringing it all in, in the place I love the most, you know? <laughs> yes, well, thank you. And thank you for modeling what it's like to sit in that because it is such a necessary skill that, and muscle that we all need to build. So, wow, that's a pretty, that's an incredible story. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know, is there, any, is there anything that anybody else wants to offer? Um, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a really interesting reckoning right now. And I'm sure that Wham! is 
it has is taking I know you guys are taking this on fully um, but I think particularly in the arts and and having this be a group of creative people <laughs> um, I can hear my daughter singing in the shower next next to me <laughs> <laughs> um, having this group of creative people these these theater um, practitioners in in the play you know white theater practitioners coming to this with a really um, with with this huge blind spot of having it all be from white supremacy culture, you know, and like having like having done the work and and um, you know having the best intentions, but just having it be um, uh, completely go awry because their starting point is is not where it should be. It's from it's like well, there's room at the table for everybody. We'll, let's you know let's open the doors and let everyone in. But who's who's table is it you know where what what stories are we actually telling and of course like that's how the american approach to the thanksgiving story is also it's like what whose story is this to tell and um you know who's who's retelling this history and i think that that's so true and it's something to really consider when we're making theater um and i think larissa fast horse has just written a brilliant a brilliant play on on these issues it's like you know, if you're starting from white supremacy culture, you're you're doomed to fail no matter how badly you want it as a white person to be a diverse experience. So yeah, yeah. thank you. It was just great. Thank you. Yeah, guys, anything you want to add? Yeah, I'll just say I had some apprehension about doing the show initially because I thought, okay, this is a satire it's approaching something as charged as racism and uh in this moment um it's approaching that from a very kind of you know irreverent standpoint so i was a little nervous you know i i, I thought okay is this you know because you do i mean you you're you're accountable you know as as a performer and as an artist uh you know you're accountable for the the projects with which you involve yourself um, and I'm, I'm really glad that I, I you know, jumped in um, because I think it is important to tackle these di really difficult topics um, with humor sometimes. I think humor is, is a great uh, healing phenomenon, you know, and I think if we can sort of laugh in the midst of our pain, um, we can move forward in, in dialect uh, w with perhaps more ease. Um, so, yeah, uh, that that's pretty much what what i have to say about it um put it. it's a really beautiful way to put it yeah. yeah and and yeah i'm grateful to larissa fast horse for having uh you know synthesized those elements of uh co comedy and and humor with uh genuine political probing in in, in such an artful way mm. Mm. so i i i think and hope she will like the production <laughs> I think so too. She's very enthusiastic in general. <laughs> Tom, you want to close us off? Yes. Um, I would say, you know, Jackson at the end, he says, it has to start here with us. Uh, and I, you know, I don't know if that's a cop out on his part or if it's actually a genuine thing and he really believes it. Uh, or if it will make a change. Um, with that said, I think it does have to start here with us. Uh, and one of the ways that I, um, I think this play brought to attention for me and, and codified it in a way that it had not been codified before, it had been sort of floating around in my brain and my psyche, my body, um, is this idea of, um, for lack of better words, a self-righteous um, evolved state. Mm. And one of the things that Jackson says, and, and also that, you know, Logan says is, um, you know, we're, we're allies of white people or we're, wait, what, what's the line, Molly? Do you um, remember? I, I, ha I happen to have the script here. Um. <laughs> it's, it's, 
we're white allies. We are evolved white allies. Right. Yeah. And we've thought about these issues as, as, uh, yeah. You know, and then I come back with every day. Yeah. Every day of our lives, we can't escape our whiteness. <laughs> and, and I think there is, you know, I mean, that is, it's just such a funny line. And the irony in that is just extraordinary. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's not something white people would normally say. Uh, and, and so I think that what Lorisa has done is, is created these people, in particular, um, uh, Molly's character and Jackson, the characters of Molly and Jackson, of, of being these self-righteous white evolved humans, mm -hmm. when in fact they're not. And, and so uh, for me, it, I can see myself because I think I am a self-evolved human uh, in many areas, and there are many areas where I am not. And so it's just, it's taken that mirror and, and just made me go, okay, I can look at this a bit more with more rigor uh, and with, uh, with the robustness in which she, um, she does. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's wonderful, which is what, you know, what we, at WAM are doing, what we hope the people that we work with are doing, and you know, in our, what we're trying to do in our community and understanding that it's a, it's a lifelong journey um, and beyond a lifelong journey in terms of, of what we're leaving. I'd love to just end with all of you thinking of a word or two about you know, if you had to encapsulate this experience of being part of the Thanksgiving play here at WAM, um, you know, how could you, if you just had to pick a word or two, what is that, what would that be? Um, and while you think about that, I'm going to just remind everybody who's watching that that Thanksgiving play is going to be from November 19th to the 22nd. You can watch it in starting the evening of the 19th anytime during the day. You can pause it. You can press play whenever you want all the way through Sunday, the 22nd in the evening. It's 90 minutes. It's a one act play. My feeling is you'll end up watching the whole thing in one go, um, but you don't have to wait till the evening to watch it. You can watch it anytime during the day as well, between the 19th and the 22nd, and you can get tickets at whamtheater.com. So parting words. Refreshingly joyful. With a slash of rejuvenation. Uh. I, as a drama therapist, need to just make a noise. So I think it's like, ha, 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 hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> I love that. I'll say like um, uh, the, the most sort of human way of um, uh, encountering technology is sort of my takeaway mm. from mm. this experience. Yeah, mine is that I'm really proud we forged ahead and found a way to tell this story despite the obvious obstacles. Uh, you know, art has to hammer through. There are very seldom uh, conditions that are conducive to its happening. So we just got to keep moving ahead. <laughs> Keep moving ahead. I hope you will all forge ahead with us and book your tickets. Rylan, Molly, Tom, and Carissa, thank you so much for giving your time and giving us your skills and your talent. I'm really excited for our family to enjoy your performances in the Thanksgiving play. And I hope you have an awesome evening. Thank you, Wham. Thank you.